Well, the prime minister's defense of his national security advisor's contention that India may have had a role in the invitation of convicted would-be assassin Jaspal Atwal did not go over well in India. Foreign Affairs there fired off a terse reaction this morning. It said, in part from the spokesman, let me categorically state that the government of India, including the security agencies, had nothing to do with the presence of Jaspal Atwal at the event hosted by the Kenya High Commissioner in Mumbai or the invitation issued to him from the Canadian High Commissioner's reception in New Delhi. Any suggestion to the contrary is baseless and unacceptable. Hmm. Well, the MPs are standing by, but let's bring in the sights and sounds from a fiery question period today. Leading off the conservative attack was very interesting. Was an MP with an interesting connection to this attempted murder? Jim Eglinski was a police officer on the scene at that crime. In 86, I was one of the first officers on the scene of the shooting an Indian minister, Sidhu. I helped him and his wife into the ambulance. It's a day I will never forget. Jaspal Atwell was convicted of attempted murder in that shooting. The victims of terrorism, they have names, they have faces, and they have families. Okay, pretty poignant stuff. Well, that set up an angry attack on Justin Trudeau from the official opposition leader. The leader of the opposition. There has never been a government, liberal or conservative, who has used a national security official to clean up an embarrassing mess that was self-inflicted by this prime minister. Why is the prime minister using independent officials to clean up his mess? Mr. Speaker, for 10 years, the conservatives opposite torqued our public service every chance it could get for partisan advantage. So I can understand they think everyone behaves that way. Well, we don't, Mr. Speaker. Well, the MPs are locked into place and loaded with reaction to all this. Marco Mendicino is a parliamentary secretary. The Candace Bergen is the Conservative House Leader. Nikki Ashton, NDP critic for jobs. Welcome to you all. It's been a while. Uh, I want to talk about this with you. Start with you, Marco, on this one. One day, it's all about your MP, uh, Ramdeep Sarai. Sarai. Uh, he was uh, told to resign his caucus uh, chair position uh, and, and uh, to take blame for this. Yet, on the other hand, Trudeau supports a security advisor who seems to think that there's an India connection to how this all came about. How can you have it both ways? Who's to blame here? Well, my colleague MP Sarai has taken responsibility for facilitating the, uh, the invitation. It should have never happened. And we've said that now on numerous occasions. Um, it is regrettable to hear the opposition try to politicize uh, what was otherwise a very successful trip where the prime minister had strengthened uh, the people-to-people -people ties. Uh, you saw the warm embrace between Prime Minister Modi and Prime Minister Trudeau, as well as his family. And stemming from that, um, we were able to produce investments, a billion dollars, two ways, as well as close to 6,000 jobs. Now, the Conservatives don't want to talk about that. Well, no. And what's unfortunate is that instead of emphasizing the actual concrete results which came from this trip, um, we're now bogged down in this, in this debate, bogged which, down. yes, yeah, as a matter are. of fact, we are, after the MP has taken responsibility. No, but react so. to that India statement, though. They're not happy with Canada. They are said that our prime minister is trying to blame them. And what is your response to that? It seems, I mean, that's not helping Canada in any relations. That seems to be tainting it. Well, look, I'm, I'm telling you what I think is the strongest of evidence of the relation. <laughs> I'm telling you what the strongest evidence of the relationship is. The strongest right. evidence of the relationship is the okay, is, is what you saw between Prime Minister Modi and Prime Minister Trudeau. What you saw in engagement from members of our cabinet, members of our caucus, engaging with civil society there, engaging with women leaders okay. there, and coming up with jobs and investments okay. close to a billion Candace. two ways. You know what? That's evidence. It's always the cover up. If so, the prime minister had a disastrous trip. If, if he came back and and he had a disastrous trip, and he said, and, you know, and somebody got invited that should never have got invited, uh, and that's it. And probably right now we'd be having this discussion about the disastrous trip, and and Marco would be saying, no, it was a wonderful trip. But the prime minister could not assume responsibility that he blew it and that he was an embarrassment. So not only did he he throw his uh, his member of parliament under the bus, he is now saying that India. India conspired so that th that this uh, guy would be there and somehow be at the reception that the prime minister and his wife and all these ministers were at. And the prime minister is doubling down. He's saying, 
yep, we think India did it. And obviously, their member of parliament from, uh, from Surrey was part of the conspiracy. That's why we are bogged down in this. And this is not going away anytime soon, unless the prime minister admits that this is all made up, or he's got some evidence that somehow I, I India was itch. involved in this. I know you're itching, but I got to get Nikki in here. This has been a it's, largely it's a shouting match between the Liberals and the Conservatives, but the NDP has been raising this as well. What's your concern? Oh, absolutely. I mean, fundamentally, Canadians deserve the truth. And, and the question is, uh, you know, what is the truth? So on the one hand, we're blaming the, uh, Trudeau is blaming the Liberal MP. On the other hand, uh, now believing this conspiracy that the Indian government's involved. Of course, the Indian government's spoken out clearly against this, against us as a country. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and really, at the end of the day, I mean, you know, this, this is, uh, uh, again, about exposing the truth, but it's also indicate, indicative of how out of touch this government is. You know, they went on an eight-day trip uh, with all sorts of photo ops, delivered very little. Even the $1 billion investment has been proven to be a, a troubling uh, statement, uh, while Canadians are facing some real issues. And now they're not even getting the truth on this uh, important mm -hmm. issue. Yeah. Marco, help me with one thing. Like, seriously, is our national security advisor, if that's indeed who this senior government official is, is telling us this, is there a link between the fact that Mr. Atwal was at that reception and some sort of India meddling in getting him there? Can you, can you clarify that? Was that part of it? Or was it simply an MP who said, I want to invite this guy. We know him. He's from our area. I want him at the reception. And his pass is over. Well, you've heard my colleague accept responsibility for, for uh, his facilitation of um, this individual being in the same space as, as the Prime Minister and other members of the official delegation. You've heard him acknowledge that sh that shouldn't have happened. You've heard the Prime Minister say the same thing. And with regards to our national security apparatus, the Prime Minister has said unequivocally that our government has full confidence in the individuals who are charged with keeping our national security as well as the safety of all Canadians. So they're right now to it float is it. what 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 the problem there is is that we see the Conservatives politicize national security like they do on every issue. And they didn't just do it when they were in power. They continue to do it now. They did it with statisticians okay. when they tried to muzzle them. They did it with scientists when they okay. muzzled Let's them as well. well and now they're veering into national security. Right. There's no boundaries to this whatsoever okay. when it comes to that. So it's clear the prime minister today, and he actually named, he named the, national, the, the security advisor, Daniel Jean, and, and spoke highly of him. And we agreed speak, speak highly of him as well. But it's clear now that the Prime Minister absolutely agrees with uh, Daniel Jean, with the, the person who did this uh, briefing for the media mm -hmm. and saying that India was part of the conspiracy. So if that isn't indeed where we are at right now, then the next question is, what's the Prime Minister going to do about that? If one of our allies has now conspired to embarrass our Prime Minister and to put the relationship of Canada and India at, at this kind of, of threat and, and risk, What's the Prime Minister going to do about it? And I think that's the next question, because it's clear the Prime Minister does believe that India conspired to have Mr. Atwell there. Okay. So what now? I'm going to run out of time, so I want to switch, if I may, to, uh, to a different topic. Pharmacare. Um, Something like you as a young mother, you got two squabbling, beautiful twins out there. They're not squabbling. I, they, I they're them. not squabbling. They're, really no, they're very vocal. cute. Treating, they're vocal. They're very vocal. Cute. Well, they're behaving far better Formal than I've seen many babies, but they're out there. Uh, but PharmaCare is something that the government seemed to bring up as a promise to come. But I should say that the Canadian Health Coalition took one listen of Bill uh, Morneau saying, well, it's only going to be for those that don't have any kind of coverage now. And they reacted this way. They said that this is a cruel sleigh of hand. Millions of Canadians have been waiting decades for life-saving medications, and they were ecstatic by the Liberals' announcement yesterday. Now today, they clarify that the Liberals want only partial drug coverage, not for everyone, and that's James Hutt from the Canadian Health Coalition. What do you make of this pharmacare? Your party is advocating for this and has for a long time. Is this a bogus pre-election strategy, or do you uh, think it's something they're going to deliver on? Well, it is a pre-election strategy, and there's a lot of it uh, that, that is bogus. I mean, really, what we heard yesterday announced was a committee. Uh, that's not good enough. You know, we've, uh, we've had a number of studies, extensive research that points to the fact that we need pharmacare. We're one of the, we're the only country in the world that has universal health care without having a parallel pharmacare program. And what it means is that so many Canadians are shut out from, being, from taking the drugs that they need. Uh, so many uh, young Young people, elderly folks in vulnerable positions are put in uh, even worse positions because of the lack of access. And, uh, you know, here you have the Liberals talking a, a good talk, but uh, but not walking the walk. And, uh, and you know, I think a lot of us are pretty cynical about what, it. Have we got a trial balloon floating here? Is that what this is, uh, Marco? And 
We'll see what happens next year, how well this goes over. No, it's uh, concrete action, and it's consistent with the overall theme uh, regarding I, you know, e great. equality of opportunity, ensuring that all Canadians can participate. That also relates to health, and um, we've named Dr. Hoskins, who, uh, who is an exceptional physician, who understands the area, who has great relationships within the health uh, stakeholder sector, and is going to bring his experience to bear on this advisory board. We need to study the issue. Mm -hmm. But as a, as a headline for your viewers, we believe in universal care, but there are gaps. I think Nikki is right. And by studying the issue very closely, what we hope to do is ensure that we have greater access to the pharma care that Canadians need. So the idea is you'd be able to claim prescription drug coverage as a, as a last claim, like so all other claims would go first, your company plans, or if you're a senior, you get pharmaceuticals. And the idea is the government would be the final safety net. Is that what you're looking at it as? Well, I think the, th that example is certainly one that's going to be studied as part of the oper operationalization of, of, of this plan. But it needs to be studied. It needs to be backed by evidence. It needs to be uh, put together in a report so that we can proceed in a prudent fashion because it's, it's an issue that really matters a lot All to right. Canadians. We've seen this before, by the way. In 1997, the Liberals said, Pharmacare for book. sure. Red book. Yeah. And Except this time, it's going to, guess what? Ontario will be very happy to hear. It's going to be all, all those folks from Ontario will be very happy to know it's going to be Kathleen Wynne and her crew. Because this, this uh, guy that, you, that you've just put in this position literally was a minister in Kathleen Wynne's government yesterday or the, you know, last, the day before. The, the day before. Yeah. So great. Kathleen Wynne is in charge of your, uh, your pharmacy program. Wow, that's, there's a lot of confidence there, I'm sure. But it went over but, fairly well when they introduced uh, 25 and under. Like, that's just started this year. Well, She's but Kathleen, I, I, I would think, though, most Ontario folks are not, don't have a lot of confidence in, in the things that Kathleen Wynne is doing. But what we did see was the, was, was the Liberals doing what they do so well, and that is put something shiny and bright in the window and zero follow-through. And, of course, need we point out, stolen from the NDP. All right, I'm moving along. Yes, let's <laughs> <That's right. okay. laughs> Good ideas can be shared, right, Marco? All right. Thank you all. Appreciate you coming on. We'll see you, I guess, after the break, next two weeks. Two we'll weeks. See you in three weeks. Nice. All right, see you in three weeks. Coming up.